Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. A lawsuit was filed to accuse Kim of a range of worker violations. The SEC announced charges against Kim for touting on social media without disclosing the payment she received for the promotion. Originally, this company was called Kimono, which you got into yes. trouble with. They said you were appropriating Japanese culture. Yes. It's Halloween, dress up like a f***ing Japanese geisha. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your f***ing ass up and work. What's your talent? It is a talent to have a brand that's really successful off of getting people to like you for you. So I would think that has to involve some kind of talent. Would you be where you are had there not been a sex tape? Oh, hi there. Hello. Hello. Hi. It's my face again. Swoop. 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 Ha ah, ha. Hi. So, a family that has entranced the general public since the 90s, a self-proclaimed, self-made billionaire who was born into wealth, and accusations of being a ruthless culture vulture. Kim Kardashian is one of the most loved and hated public figures on the planet, yet is simultaneously one of the most followed and platformed. Why the f is that? <laughs> after a lot of you requesting and after a lot of soul searching, today we're gonna dive into the disturbing world of Kim Kardashian. Now y'all, there were many different ways that I initially planned to approach this, including covering all of the terrible, like manipulative shit that Kim has said over the years, the cultural appropriation, all the blatant lies that she tells her fans. But y'all, that is a massive undertaking, okay? Like Swoop is just like, I need it in stages <laughs> and this doc would be three hours long if I did all that. So I'm gonna cover all of that in another doc and today we're going to focus on Kim Kardashian's alleged scams, the creation, the chaos, and the kingdom. Now there's gonna be a lot of K's in this series so here's your heads up. No more C's allowed, okay? It's K or nothing, bitch. <laughs> and that's bitch with a K. What? Don't, don't question, just, just go with it, okay? <laughs> Now also, if you are seeing me for the first time, welcome. I'm a filmmaker and make documentaries and short films on unsolved cases, true crime, and social media influencers who abuse their power and manipulate their audiences because as I always say, it's not drama, it's dangerous. We also dig deeper into the root psychology and sometimes we take it to Petty University because these bitches be trying my patience, okay? <laughs> We're gonna dive right in, but real quick, a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Kenzie, who I am so incredibly excited to partner with again. So like, I never thought I would be able to have silky smooth hairless legs and armpits and other areas without bumps. And paying them big bucks for laser hair removal is not an option, child. So when I first found out about at-home devices, like I never thought that they'd work, but bitch, I stand corrected. So I have been using the Kenzie IPL hair removal handset at home and I have been shocked at the results. Now, it takes about 12 weeks to get the full hairless results, but after three weeks on my pits, my hair growth was way slower than before and the best part I don't get razor burn oh my gosh I hate shaving so much and don't even get me started on waxing child okay I did that for a minute and I was like <laughs> so IPL means intense pulsed light which converts light energy to heat which targets your body hair and honey I don't even know this thing it just works okay so out of the box you get the IPL handset a long nine foot cord instructions and please pay attention to the skin color chart as the intensity level is based on your tone and deep tones should use less level one only. Now to use it, you just plug it in and there will be a green flashing button at the back, press to turn it on, then press the green button to increase or decrease the intensity level, which you can check with the lights. Then just press the pulse button to flash away that hair. There's also a glide mode where you just press and hold the pulse button for five seconds to get automatic flashing. Now again, you can see results in as little as two weeks and then you'll have full hairless, silky smooth results in 12 weeks. And after that, you literally only have to use it once a month and it takes just minutes. Honey, minutes, once a month for buttery smoothness. Yes to all of that. So the handset can be used from your upper lip down, just patch test first like anything. And IPL also reduces sunspots, blemishes, pigmentation, and wrinkles. So whoo child, I am here for her. So if you wanna be buttery smooth and hairless, go to my link below or kenzie.com, that's K-E-N-Z-Z-I.com and use my code SWOOP1 to get $50 off the device. And I'll see you in the land of glorious hairlessness because I am never shaving again. <laughs> 
And y'all, again, I just want to thank you for being here week after week. I know I sound like a broken record, but I always just want to be grateful for all of you just being here and watching these docs and checking out the sponsors, which is also a great way to help support this channel. Y'all know these docs take a massive amount of time to produce and the sponsors and just y'all being here are what make that possible. And I am so stoked to say that I have brought in a little team to help. That's why we're getting more uploads going on here. So hi, Sky, hi. But for real, like y'all, y'all are the ones who've made this possible. Like I would be nothing without you. So I just want to thank you with all of my weird little heart. All right, class in session. Always in life, we always protected our dad because we felt bad for him because he didn't want the divorce. We knew it was my mom's fault and we were really well aware. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to do something for me. I'd like you to sit back, close your eyes, take a deep breath in, exhale out. And let's transcend to a time where the Kardashians didn't exist. <laughs> and you know, it is here in this Kardashian free world that we find true nirvana. <laughs> So let me take you on a little journey. Kimberly Noel Kardashian was born on October 21st, 1980 in Los Angeles, California. Now, I'm not gonna go so far as to say she was born with a silver spoon in her mouth, but it wasn't sterling silver, okay? Like, I'm just saying it looked hella shiny, okay? A bitch definitely was over here with the Tiffany & Co baby rattle. Like, you know the one. Like, that, that's some rich people shit, okay? Anyway, Kim was born to Chris and Robert Kardashian and was the second oldest child in the family. Now, hold your horse y'all. Chris wasn't the momager we know just yet. Remember, we, we've traveled back in time. They didn't exist in that way. So Kim is growing up with her older sister, Courtney, her younger sister, Chloe, and her younger brother, Rob, which by the way, like why ain't Rob get a name with the letter K? Okay, K-Rob, Karab, Karab, can we have a Karab, Karab Kardashian? Is it too much to ask for Karab Kardashian? Like the man was set up from the jump for abandonment issues, okay? Sorry, I am getting so sidetracked. K-Rob's sister, Mr. Kimberly <laughs> had a relatively normal childhood. I mean, if, if being born into a super wealthy high society family is normal or whatever. So Kim's father, Robert, became a permanent member of the public eye due to his role in that little thing called, I don't know, the trial of OJ Simpson. Yeah, you know, the juice is loose. We all, we all know what happened there. The glove doesn't fit. That bitch still did it, okay? I'm just, I'm just gonna put that out there, allegedly. <laughs> Hannah Collin, run in here and come get y'all juice. <laughs> so see, the Kardashians before they were the Kardashians like rubbed elbows with celebrities like since day one. Like with Robert being a successful attorney and businessman and then Chris being like the matriarch of the family and her social network and their well off status in the city of angels, like interactions like this were bound to happen. So much so that OJ Simpson and Nicole Brown were actually named godparents to the Kardashian children. However, comma, here's where things get a little messy. So in 1991, Chris and Robert Kardashian get divorced due to infidelity on Chris's part. Now at this point, Kim is 11 years old and despite Chris and Robert remaining close friends, like things are never quite the same. And Kim reflects on the divorce in an interview with Oprah in 2012 saying, Always in life, we always protected our dad because we felt bad for him because he didn't want the divorce. We knew it was my mom's fault and we were really well aware. Now, Chris goes on to get remarried within the year to Caitlyn Jenner, a prominent Olympian, blending the Kardashians and the Jenners together under one roof. But then the brutal case known around the world happens and the Kardashians are thrust into the spotlight for the first time, essentially. Continue when police will continue to investigate the brutal slaying of Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Simpson, and her friend, 25-year-old Ronald Goldman. And I think like people often forget just how closely intertwined Kris Jenner and Kim and like the whole gang were to this case. And I often wonder if that might have shaped Kim as a person to some degree. Kind of hard to think that it wouldn't have since she was a young teen around this time. Now, at this point, Kim is in high school at Marymount High, which is an all girls Catholic school near UCLA, which by the way, like I did some digging, like if y'all want to try to explain to me why paying over $39,000 a year for high school is worth it. I just, I am, a bitch is all ears, okay? Like unless y'all are teaching me how to turn everything I touch into literal gold and like fart out fair trade diamonds, then like, I'm sorry, but a bitch is putting that money in investment accounts, okay? Like what is the point? It's just rich people be rich and like just out here buying legacies like it was one ply toilet paper, okay? I am 
done. <laughs> Anyways, while in high school, Kim starts developing her personal style when she's not in uniform. And remember, like the world's attention is really on her and her family and the kids. It's a lot to be going, growing up into, right? So she's developing her personal style when she's not even you know, wearing her school uniform and also starts to snoop on her father's trial documents, sparking an interest in law and forensics. <laughs> no, really, <laughs> Kim herself said, my dad had a library and when you pushed on this wall, there was this whole hidden closet room with all of his OJ evidence books. On weekends, I would always snoop and look through. I was really nosy about the forensics because nothing says attorney client privilege like letting your teenager snoop through all of your court documents. <laughs> I'm sure that's legal. Anyways, uh, more on that career path later. So Kim's over here with like a passion for fashion, right? Like she's a human brat doll. Passion for fashion. I like the way they say that. Brats. <laughs> Everyone else was be calling it brats and they just like brats. Now, besides working at a clothing boutique in her own father's office during her teenage years, Kim also discovered the power of reselling on eBay, something that would eventually spawn her closet organization business and later her rise to reality TV stardom. Yes, friends, we can all thank eBay for giving us the Kim Kardashian we know and love today. Well, like eBay and Ray J. It's a toss up, bitch. But let's talk about her arguably ingenious eBay usage. As Kim puts it in an interview with Variety, when I was younger, I worked in my dad's office. When I was there, I discovered eBay and I loved shopping. I had to be on a budget. I didn't have credit cards. How do I figure out how to make this a business? I remember I bought these Manolo Bolonic shoes that were $700. He let me buy five pairs. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, 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 pause, stop, hold up. Kim, Kim, Kimberly, Kim. <laughs> so like she says in this quote that she was on a budget and didn't have credit cards, but got daddy to buy her $3,500 worth of shoes to sell. Like you call that a budget, bitch. See, this is why Nepo babies like Kim or like Kendall Jenner be pissing people off like every three to five business days. Like they run around talking about how they're self starters. They created their empires without leaning on the family name. Like Kendall really out here saying she is a famous model because she pulled herself out the mud by her own bootstraps. Like bitch, them bootstraps is Versace and that mud is like 24 karat gold melted down into your kiddie pool. Like I just, I personally can't with the self starter shit. Like yes, there is a lot of work and all of that kind of things that I want to discredit that, but like give credit where it's due and you came from a shit ton of money and a well known family. Like that means something. Anyway, sorry, back to the quote. I had to pay him back plus interest. I sold every pair on eBay for $2,500. I became so obsessed with seeing that return, I would sell off the things I wouldn't be wearing. And girl, just those shoes that Kim is talking about that she was selling, those were the Manolo Bolognics that the one and only J-Lo wore in her All I Have music video. You know, you know the one. And so Kim continued to sell her own items and other trendy, hard to access designer pieces until tragedy struck her family. And y'all like, you know, Joe jokes aside, like this is honestly really heartbreaking for any family. In July of 2003, when Kim was just 22 years old, her father Robert was diagnosed with esophageal cancer, ultimately succumbing to the disease just two months later on September 30th, 2003. Understandably, this took a massive toll on Kim and the Kardashians and the Jenner families. And while we'll get into some of her response around the grieving process later, like I, I personally know what it's like to lose someone to cancer, which is the fucking devil. And so my heart goes out to the family, any family facing that. It's just, it's absolutely atrocious. All right, so shifting gears, uh, after the death of her father, Kim later expanded her reselling business into a closet organization business, posting about her services on eBay until her longtime childhood friend and classmate, Paris Hilton, threw her a bone and agreed to be a client. I'm so grateful that I had you as like, a mentor or someone, you know, just to have that as my example. We can't talk about Kim without talking about Paris mother in Hilton, the heiress herself, the Y2K, the originator of the timelessly iconic phrase. That's hot. 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 
So I did some digging since Paris is kind of the introduction the world had to Kim Kardashian. Our girl Kimmy was organizing closets and selling whatever her clients didn't want online. Meaning she was like mostly in the background of the first few episodes of A Simple Life rather than being a star. And like actually when asked about Kim's rise to stardom, <laughs> Paris, <laughs> Paris had this to say. We've known each other since we were little girls and we've always been friends. It's nice to inspire people. So yeah, I'm really proud of her and what she's done though. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, was that? Was that shade, Paris? She said it's nice to inspire people. I'm sorry, did Paris motherfucking Hilton graduate from Petty University? What in the whole grain, gluten-free, sugar-free, splendid daddy audacity? That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. At this time in 2004, Kim was closet organizing for stars all across Hollywood, including Brandy. Remember that, she's, she's got a brother named Ray J. You may have heard of him. Now, it wasn't until Kim and Paris started party hopping two years later in 2006 that the media really started to take notice. And aside from some choice clips from The Simple Life that were, well, they were a little awkward. In the Hollywood Hill. And this happens to be one of her closets. I love this closet, it's so good. What's going on with it? That is if I ever go to India outfit. Really? Yes. Are you planning on going? Yes. But don't you have to like cover up everything? Classy bitches, that's hot. <laughs> So Paris had learned the clubbing ropes from her sister Nikki while living in New York City. And until now, the Los Angeles paparazzi scene was like mainly reserved for movie premieres and Hollywood royalty. And like Paris called the party years a new celebrity genre. And like, honestly, she, she wasn't wrong and she kind of changed everything. Take a picture of me. Here. Just pick it up, man. Get ready? Aw, look at poor Kim, just standing there with no one asking her to take a photo. What's a girl to do? <laughs> Kim actually spoke about this time saying, we'd go anywhere and everywhere just to be seen. We knew exactly where to go, where to be seen, how to have something written about you. All you had to do is go to this restaurant or this party, talk about whatever you want to talk about, and it would be in the paper the next day. Oh my gosh, that's hot. <laughs> now, unfortunately for all of the gossip world, the, their friendship started to burn out when Paris was arrested, first for suspicion of driving under the influence in 2006, and again when she was sentenced for speeding with a suspended license in 2007. She's lucky she looked the way she did, if you know what I am saying. Now, Kim initially showed support for Paris, but something else was on the horizon of a videotape variety, something that actually, yes, Paris probably did inspire, didn't she? But first, we have to dash. I have all the big things. Yeah. I have the extravagant everything you could possibly imagine and no one will ever do it like that. I Okay, so Kim is officially a party girl. Her eBay closet organization turned celebrity clothes selling business is doing well and Tabloid America is starting to recognize her. So again, what's a girl to do? A girl's gonna open a clothing store. Duh. Huh. What are you? I'm a mouse. Duh. Introducing Dash. Courtney, Chloe, and I opened up Dash 10 years ago. Fiat, yeah, big booty hoes. Yes, Dash, the first luxury clothing store that the Kardashians opened all the way back in 2006. Now, at the time, Kim was 26 years old, attending Pierce College, and supposedly working the register at her own store simultaneously. Now, based on Kim's already successful celebrity garment reselling business, Dash was a luxury consignment store populated by celebrity closet cast off and like an extra snooty staff. I mean, let's be real. Nothing says luxury like the sales clerk treating you like garbage. Now, since Dash opened right before the start of the infamous Keeping Up With The Kardashians show, you would most likely know Dash from its heavy features in the earlier seasons as Kim, Chloe, and Courtney managed the business together. Now, add in a couple of spinoffs to highlight new Dash stores opening Miami and New York, and you have yourself a winner, right? I am so excited to be back in Miami. It's been a long time since we've been here. We've missed Miami, and hopefully Miami has missed us. Thank you guys!
dashboard here to revamp the Miami Dash. It's our baby. It's something that we care so much about. While the mini chain did expand to locations in Los Angeles and like Miami and New York, it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, between the lawsuit from a legally blind plaintiff who argued that the Dash website wasn't accessible, violating the Americans with Disabilities Act and the general downward spiral of brick and mortar shopping in general, Dash was ducked. Okay, and you know, that's officially the first time in my life I actually meant to say ducked instead of fucked. You hear that autocorrect? I actually said ducked this time. So are you happy I didn't say fucked? <laughs> Sorry, where was I? Um, ah yes, rich people failing at shit. So in a statement from 2018, Kim explains, oh wait, you know what? Should, should, I, should I give this the dramatic reading treatment? <clears throat> After nearly 12 years, my sisters and I have decided to close the doors of our Dash stores. We opened our first store as a family in 2006, and since then, we have made so many lifelong memories. We know in our hearts it's time to move on. Thank you everyone. Aw, isn't that just sweet? Just warms my heart. You know what else warms my heart? Reading the Yelp reviews. <laughs> Roll the intro. <laughs> All right, y'all, Petty University class in session. Let's hear what the poor, poor souls that dared to enter the Dash stores had to say because bitch, they did not mince words, okay? Tiffany, who gave it a one star, I really wish I could give no stars. The staff was not friendly or welcoming. I could see if it was busy while my friends and I were in there, but we were the only customers. Oh, there was a blanket of dust on the display that you see as soon as you walk in the door and on other displays. <laughs> Very disappointing. Ooh, you know, it's like you walk into the store and you're just like, and then you just, and it's coated and you're like, what am I, why Why are your praises the way that they are? You, you can't even afford some Windex. Okay, Steve, can you polish the glass? Carl, I'm gonna need you to do something, Carl. You're charging like $5,000 for a t-shirt over here, Carl. Okay, can we get the dust? Okay, sorry. Now, Ken, who also gave a one star said, I was very thirsty and almost bought one of the $10 bottles of water with the princess's faces on it. <laughs> But I figured if it tasted anything like how the store seems to operate, I probably would have choked. <laughs> Ken, Ken, what are you doing, Ken? I'm also, I can't believe they had $10 bottles of water with their faces on it. That is some next level rich people rich and shit. All right, here's another one from Myra. The store has a security guard standing in front of the store. Guarding what? Ridiculously ugly overpriced clothes? <laughs> I'm telling y'all, Yelp takes no prisoners. Let's look at another one. Linda says, this store is like an overpriced Forever 21 with ugly socks. <laughs> and we know what happened to Forever 21, okay? Would you be where you are had there not been a sex tape? So I was gonna do a quick summary about the infamous S tape uh, that Kim and Ray J put out because there is just so much to cover. But there have been some very recent, pretty serious allegations that came up from Ray J like just a couple of weeks ago uh, while I was working on this regarding Kris Jenner's involvement in the actual making and approving of the S tape, which would almost make Kris like a pimp to her own daughter. Like it is, it's kind of some heavy shit and it's really shaped a lot of pop culture. So I decided that I'm going to do a deep dive, <laughs> pun not intended, but also intended, but not intended. Uh, I'm gonna do a deep dive into all of the controversy around the S tape in its own doc uh, and all of the societal implication, all that. It is wild way more than I ever could have imagined. So stay tuned for that. But for now, just know, I mean, we all know, right? Like, how could we not? Know that the S tape is what really put Kimberly on the map and is kind of the foundation to her entire monstrous empire. So, would you be where you are had there not been a sex tape? <sighs> More on that to come in another doc. Hold on. Buckle up, hold on to your butts, and keep your arms, legs, and belongings inside the vehicle at all times because we are now going to do a speed run before I lose my f soul. So, in 2007, when Kim is 27, Keeping Up with the Kardashians airs on E. Now, around this time, everyone and their freaking mother was talking about the Osbournes, and the Kardashians were set to uh, own the same space, but somehow make it even crazier for public viewing. Like, y'all, literally in the first episode, Kim tells her family that she hates them. Yeah. What are you talking about? She said you have a lot of junk in your truck. I meant outside <clears throat> in your car. There's some okay. stuff in your car. We need to get out. <laughs> I hate you all. 
Now the episode where Kim marries NBA player Chris Humphreys, which by the way, I completely forgot that she had married somebody else in this short ass. Mm -hmm. That episode earned the network over $10 million in ad revenue alone. Bitch. <laughs> Let me marry someone for like 72 hours and make $10 million in the process. Now, essentially what I'm trying to get at here is that the Kardashians were making Kardashian bank, <laughs> but of course with mo money comes more taxes. And so what is a wealthy family to do? Uh, open a church. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Let's open a church. You know, we make it so much money. Let's open a church, everyone. It's all about the church. <laughs> Why'd I feel like Oprah there? And you get a church, you get a church, you, everybody gets a church. <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling you, the devil works hard, but Kris Jenner works harder. The California Community Church, or the, really the California Community Church, or the KKK for short. <laughs> Wait, is that why they didn't give it the special K treatment? I just, cause it, it was right there. Like you sh I mean, stay committed to the brand, Chris, Kim, okay? Should've named the church with a bunch of Ks. I mean, it's, you know, accurate. Anyways, the church is fronted by woefully disgraced Pastor Brad Johnson, who was literally forced to resign from his last church because of an adultery scandal and who married Chloe and Lamar. And I guess is all about giving. Wrong! We don't know where the money goes like <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> now, I don't know, this probably belongs in a full doc about the scams of Kris Jenner, but the California Community Church insists that all congregates donate $1,000 a month or 10% of their earnings annually to the church itself. Now, I understand 10% tithing, that's a, a practice of a lot of churches. $1,000 a month shit is just like, wh you, you <laughs> why? It doesn't cost a thousand dollars to praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And then when you dig deeper, who owns the church? Chris Jenner. Who famously said they donate 10% of their income to the church annually? Kim Kardashian. Do, 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 do you see where I'm going with this? Yes, that is right. Sweet Kimberly Noel Kardash, my brains against the wall, made the California Community Church the beneficiary of her eBay charity auctions. The church that her mother owns. So her mother is the beneficiary of her profits. I just, we see the problem here, right? And, and since she's so open about always donating 10% of her earnings, you would assume that that would be in the millions of dollars, right? Wrong again. Kimberly, Kimberly, Kimberly. Kimberly, Kimberly Noel. Okay, we talked about this, Kimberly. Kimberly, no. Last time I checked, someone that brought in, say, $20 million in 2011 and $40 million in 2012, first she would be donating, um, let me do the math here, uh, $2 million or $4 million, respectively. But actually, as PayPal Charitable Giving Fund tax documents state, CCC, the church, received $44,917 from Kardashian's eBay sales in 2013 and 19,009 in 2012. Doesn't exactly add up, right? So you have this big public spectacle. Look at us, we're so great, we're amazing. We've started this church. You can come to our church. All are welcome, like other churches. All are welcome for the low, low price of $1,000. And then like, we're gonna donate 10% of everything, except we're not going to, and we're just gonna do this for the PR move, right? Like it's such a, uh, like a gross scam to me. When I read it, I just kind of like boil inside. Take a deep breath again. Keep your eye on the white rabbit because we are going down the rabbit hole. There she goes, she's running up, she's running up, it looks good, and no, there she goes, and she's taking off the pole again. The FTC says the company has agreed to pay a whopping $40 million fine to settle complaints about the sneaker line, specifically, quote, unfounded claims that shape ups would help people strengthen and tone their buttocks. Now, also in 2011, Kim Kardashian became the face of the new Skechers product, Skechers Shape Ups. And when I said she became the face, the bitch literally had one of the biggest Super Bowl commercials of all time. <laughs> for sketchers of all things. So like in 2011, it was still all about, you know, the art of the sleaze. And honestly, I don't know that much has changed, but here we are. Like ads were hypersexualized. For some reason, women were always like sweaty and everything was filmed with like this lingering gaze. Like it's, ooh, it's just so original, right? And, and this ad was no different. In it, Kim breaks up with her personal trainer saying he's the best she's ever had. The things just aren't working out but there's someone, no, no, something else in the picture. It's not someone else, it's something else. Shoes, she's talking about shoes. She's leaving this sweaty sack of muscles for shoes. Bye-bye trainer, hello shape ups. 
I think I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. These shoes to be precise. Ah yes, the shape ups. The ugly ass shoes that are purposefully unstable and claim to tone your legs and juicy ass just like Kim. <laughs> life can be a real workout, but with shape ups, you'll turn your workout into a part of your everyday life without ever going to the gym. Or not. Time for the ridiculous. And tonight we're adding the folks behind a line of sneakers called Skechers Shape Ups. Now, according to the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, Skechers has been acting kind of a little sketchy. The FTC says the company has agreed to pay a whopping $40 million fine to settle complaints about the sneaker line, specifically, quote, unfounded claims that Shape Ups would help people lose weight and strengthen and tone their buttocks. And when it came to buttocks, Skechers reach for the stars. I never want to hear Anderson Cooper say the word buttocks ever again. Holy shit, I cannot scrub that from my ear holes. And if I have to hear it, y'all have to hear it. <laughs> okay? Strengthen and tone their buttocks. Tone their buttocks. Tone their buttocks. So this was actually the second time that the FTC targeted toning shoes, uh, starting their crusade against Reebok with their Easy Tone and Run Tone shoes, ending in a $25 million settlement before moving on to Skechers shape ups and the damage here 40 million dollars the company has agreed to pay 40 million dollars to settle claims that sketchers made false promises when it said the shoe would help you lose weight and get in shape with over 520,000 claims of false advertising that is massive and they knew it going into it but you know there's always more multi-million dollar fish in the sea right maybe diet pills are a better fit do you have the body you've always dreamed of you have the power to reinvent yourself. You can change the way you look. Create the body you deserve. How hot can you be? I mean, honestly, like hot enough that I don't want to literally shit brown water, but that's just me, babe. Quick trim, live your dream. Now, Kim and Chloe were all up in this quick trim diet pill business, and I have some thoughts, <laughs> but so did the FDA. So like in reality, just by plastering their packaging with Kim and Chloe's face, quick trim was able to rake in a whopping $45 million in revenue. But there's just one teeny weeny tiny little problem. They're just hawking caffeine pills. So like, let me explain. According to the company, quick trim products, which range from pills to powdered drink mixes, are designed to detoxify and clean the body by eliminating extra water weight and bloating, in large part because of the laxatives they include. Too bad there's no scientific evidence to back that up. In fact, a study published in the Journal of Family Practice in 2011 analyzed over 20 case studies reported over the past decade and found that colon cleanses cause symptoms from like mild cramping to kidney failure. Kidney failure, like that, that I just, that, I, I'm out. I'm just, I'm out. Now it turns out the Kardashians were out too, like out $5 million. Uh, now, according to legal documents acquired by TMZ, the sisters were sued because, and I quote, the pills which are supposed to allow users to keep up with the Kardashians trim physiques don't work. Sh shocking. Hey, hey friends, here, here's a news flash for, for people who don't understand. You'll never actually be able to keep up with the Kardashians physique because it's the result of surgery, allegedly. <laughs> I just, and no shade to surgery, but they just, they, they lie about it and that bothers me. That's a topic for another doc. We'll get into all of that another time. It wasn't a blanket statement towards women or to feel like I don't respect the work or think that they don't work hard. I'm, I'm really sorry if it was received that way. So remember when mobile gaming was like, you know, like really big, like when it felt like everyone and their mother, sister, brother, dog had their own app? Well, it's time we talk about Kim Kardashian colon Hollywood. <laughs> I just love saying the colon there it just really emphasizes it. <laughs> Okay, but I bet we can find something way cooler. So hot. Buy it and get going. You have to meet my friend. Where are you? The premiere is about to start. Check out your timeline. You're blowing up. Download Kim Kardashian Hollywood for free and play today. Now, if you thought that this ad was gonna, you know, like help change your life and help you become Kim's new BBL. <laughs> I, I meant BFF and I said BBL, okay? We just, 
Can't, I'm sorry, I just, I am trapped in the Kardashian bubble. I can't get out, okay? BFF, I meant BFF. If you thought this app was going to make you Kimmy's BFF when she talks to you and like helps you pick out your outfits and men, like honey, you know better. You know, I we, we talked about this, okay? I taught you better. You know better. You didn't think that. I know you didn't think that. Here's what we're actually dealing with. Here's the great thing about Kim Kardashian's Hollywood is if you ever want something, you buy it with real money. It's only $4.99 for $5,000. Like where else can you get a deal like that? What's great about spending money on Kim Kardashian's Hollywood is you're giving money to a good cause the Kardashian family. You did such an amazing job. You should come to this party with us. Oh, well, I can't say no to that. Actually, I do not have the option. I can't not go to this party. The game was unironically Glue Mobile's most successful game ever. I mean, until it wasn't, right? By 2018, the once soaring sales of $43.4 million per quarter had trickled down to a measly 8.1 million, rendering the app and by extension its users worthless. How did the mighty fall so far? Maybe it was just, you know, the not quite kosher Twitter marketing. Professor Petty is here to educate. Now, we've all seen the living dumpster fire that is Twitter. Yes, it's chaos. I love it. <laughs> but we're all familiar with the constant feed of information and live updates, right? Excellent. So in Kim Kardashian colon Hollywood, there's also a feed update that pops up throughout the game to share news and fictional gossip like a Twitter account. So obviously when the game asks you, you know, the player to follow a fictional news reporter at star news underscore Ray, it's part of the game, right? <laughs> Jokes on you, player who downloaded. When players followed Star News underscore Ray in the game, they also followed them in real life on their public Twitter account. I mean, like, how else would a literal video game character have over 210,000 followers? Also, sidebar, Your Honor, like, did, did anyone else notice that they made up a name with Ray in it? Like, Ray J? Any, anyone get that? Am I? Charlotte, Charlotte, did you pick up on that, Steve? Steve, did you notice that? But you know, no harm, no foul, until the game offers in-app points for sharing news on what you would assume to be this fake Twitter feed. Now, if you accept, a tweet is literally posted to your actual Twitter account automatically marketing the game. And how do I know that? The literal official account of the Environmental Protection Agency's Office of Water posted one of these very tweets and I just, whoo, you know, the internet delivers. Hope y'all reach that A-list, I guess. This little marketing trick no doubt made Kim and, and the parent company Glue and her investors millions of dollars. Like, and, and actually, you know, a bitch can back that information up. Between June 2014, and June 2015, Kim had earned $51 million, according to Forbes. When analyzing the increase in wealth, Forbes attributed it to her moves within the tech world with her namesake game accounting for 40% of her yearly earnings. Like she even won a Webby in 2016. A Webby. This is where we're at, people. Nude selfies till I die. Cool. Now, unsurprisingly, like most things Kardashian, the second Kim Kardashian colon Hollywood, along with the rest of the Kardashian content apps stopped making bank, they shut it down, saying that, we've all had an incredible experience connecting with all of you through our apps these past few years, but have made the difficult decision to no longer continue updating in 2019. May it rest in pieces. What's your talent? It is a talent to have a brand that's really successful off of getting people to like you, for you. So if there's one thing the Kardashians are known for besides their n natural curves, am I like, am I supposed to call it natural? Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, obviously do what you want, but like, we all know it's surgery, right? Even though she keeps lying to her fans saying she's had nothing done. I just, I personally think that's a shitty thing to lie about. It sets up really dangerous precedents for people who look up to that and think that they're supposed to look like that, but they never will because it re literally requires surgery. Is there any part of your body that you girls would think of reducing now? No. Yeah, my thighs. Really? I'm like all about it, owning it and embracing what yeah, you got. Yeah, of course, but if, you, if, you, if there's a body part, I would definitely say like my thighs and my stomach. I'm pretty perfect. True. <laughs> but anyway, Swoop, that is besides the point. We'll get into that again, another doc. 
So the year is now 2012, Call Me Maybe is the song of the summer, and Chroma Beauty has hit the shelves. And then it was yeeted off those same shelves within the same year. So it turns out Chroma Beauty and Chroma Cosmetics, respectively, both already existed and were not too pleased that the Kardashians were trying to slide in on their business. Now, another lawsuit was filed and Chroma Beauty was forced to be rebranded as none other than Kardashian beauty. It was destined to fail. Like a formal employee said this, obviously the biggest problem for Chroma Beauty was its name, but another big struggle for the brand was probably the level of involvement from the sisters. Kardashian beauty didn't have the industry respect that Kylie Cosmetics and KKW have now. As in interesting as a Kardazzle eyeshadow palette sounds, and yes, that was a thing. Bitches be passing on it, right? But hey, from, from the ashes, a phoenix must rise. And that phoenix was named KKW Beauty. We're doing a photo shoot for my makeup line. I have grandma and mom all blocked. Or at least I tried. I mean, that phoenix rose and burned to a crisp faster than Kim's relationship with Pete Davidson, but who's counting the time? KKW Beauty existed for three whole years, from 2017 to 2020, before being shut down for rebranding, which is just code for it failed. It, it, it failed, failed. Failed, failed. <laughs> Rich fail, but fail. I'm sure they made profits, but also failed. And like, at this point, I'm just like, if you're gonna rebrand again, like third, fourth, fifth, whatever the time is, can you at least inject some color, some spice, maybe some something into the vibe that you're going for? Because if I see one more neutral toned brand, I'm going to lose my fucking shit balls, okay? Like I can't, I just, I can't do another shade called Barely There, Mac. For the love of God, we have got enough milks now <laughs> would everyone stop milking shit <laughs> mm. but you know uh, Kim originally this company was called Kimono which you got into yes. trouble with because yes. they said you were appropriating Japanese culture and I, I, I completely heard and understood what they were talking about but you know we haven't talked about Kimono yet oh you you, you don't know about kimono. Come here with a K, come here. Whew, you know, Kim's shapewear line, kimono. Uh, the one clearly inspired by traditional Japanese garments. Yeah, appropriating that into westernized shapewear is not problematic at all. I'm sure her fans loved this. <laughs> Oopsie. Well, you know, it's it's nothing a cheeky Instagram apology can't fix. Being an entrepreneur and my own boss has been one of the most rewarding challenges I've been blessed with in my life. When I announced the name of my shapewear line, I did so with the best intentions in mind. And after careful thought and consideration, I will be launching my solution wear brand under a new name and thus, Skims was born. Lovely. But you know, uh, Kim, originally this company was called Kimono, which you got into yes. trouble with because yes. they said you were appropriating Japanese culture. Yes. And I, I, I completely heard and understood what they were talking about. Now, I'm gonna be honest here. Like, I, I do have some respect for Kim making a shapewear or solution wear, as she calls it, brand that caters to an extended size range with multiple skin tones. What I'm not here for is the fact that many of the Kardashian-Jenner business ventures seem to race bait at the start of the launch in order to stir up outrage and media attention, and then they just backpedal and act like it wasn't intentional, and then shift gears now that you're all listening. It is a manipulation tactic to me. It just adds to the, the all of this just feeling of scamming and f defrauding your own fans and your own audience, which just really, it just really bothers me. And, and with Skims recently earning a $240 million Series B funding round, it looks like the Kardashian Corporation is here to stay. And you know, I'm sure Kim donated 10% of that to the Church of Kardashian. And so it's all as well in the world, right? <laughs> On Monday, a lawsuit was filed in Los Angeles by a group of gardeners and maintenance staff who accused Kim of a range of worker violations. Yeah, turns out that in addition to all of the other lawsuits, which we've mentioned today, which there are just, there's so many, there's one more that we do need to address, and that was the wage theft lawsuit. Now, I'll be honest, there's not a ton of information available about this, but y'all know that I am not about to leave a single stone unturned, okay? I'm like that annoying auntie who's always up in your business, like, where are you going? What's his name? What'd he do? He make money? You making money? Did you wax today? How's your health insurance premium? <laughs> 
Just wanna make sure you're on top of things. Anyway, so for context, Kim lives in an $11 million mansion in the Santa Monica mountain. Here in my garage, I just bought this uh, new Lamborghini. Sorry, scratch that. It, it, it's honestly more like a compound. Like y'all, look at the size of this home. And since it's so much property and Kim has her kids to take care of, she has cleaning and maintenance workers on call, which I mean, honestly, who wants to clean 27 toilets and 179 closets? So I guess it makes sense you hire people to do that. But as it turns out, seven of those employees are suing Kim's ass, alleging that cleaning and maintenance workers at her Santa Monica Mountains home weren't paid for all of the hours they worked, didn't get overtime pay, weren't given required meal and rest breaks, and didn't get any pay stubs or documents related to employment. Now, is this the part where I remind everyone that Kim is a literal billionaire and has no excuse not to pay her employees? Or that just because these employees were hired through a third party vendor doesn't mean that she shouldn't take some of the responsibility for their treatment? I, I, is this the time I mentioned that? You know, you read things like this, you read these stories, these billionaires, and then their employees coming out being like, you didn't pay me. There's no other interpretation for me on that other than you're trash. Like you make billions, pay your people. You don't even have to make billions, pay your people. It's just, I just, I don't think it's hard to be a good person, but I don't know, maybe it's hard to be a good rich person. I don't know. And then of course, to catch us right up to the moment, right before I sat down to film this basically, I learned that Kimberly just got in big ass trouble with the SEC. Kim Kardashian agrees to a $1.26 million settlement with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, for those of you who might not know, the SEC stands for the Securities Exchange Commission. Uh, they're an independent agency with the United States government whose main focus is to enforce the law against market manipulation, like hashtag don't f with the SEC. Kim Kardashian agreed to pay a $1.26 million fine to the Securities and Exchange Commission to settle civil charges after the reality TV star touted a crypto asset, Ethereum Max, on Instagram. The SEC charged Kardashian with failure to disclose that she was paid $250,000 to publish her Instagram post. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. Moving on. Then you have to work almost twice as hard and be twice as good yeah. because people are ready to pull you down and say you don't belong there and you're only there because of your dad or your mom or whatever the case may be. I wanna talk about Nepo babies. Given that Kim and the rest of the Kardashians are constantly claiming that they are self-made with Kim expanding her billionaire title to be that of self-made billionaire, I couldn't help but wonder if that's actually true, right? In What is a Nepotism Baby, Anna and Danya write about the phenomenon saying, for centuries, children born into rich, famous, and otherwise powerful families have had a leg up in life, inheriting monarchies, business empires, wealth, and star power. In some cases, they've surpassed their parents' status. That is what most parents wish for their children. It's also often how power works, especially in Hollywood. Americans tend to have a strong, optimistic belief in meritocracy, the idea that hard work demonstrates exceptional skill, and that if you have both, you will be rewarded accordingly. Now, one of the more prominent, like, old-school OG Nepo babies is the legendary Jamie Lee Curtis, who had this to say. It's important for me, given that I'm this bougie princess from Los Angeles, even if I claim I worked hard, I've never really worked hard a day in my life. I auditioned many, many, many times for Halloween, and then it was between me and one other woman whose name I know, but I will never say publicly. Much respect to her for that. I'm sure the fact that I was Janet Leigh and Tony Curtis's daughter and that my mother had been in Psycho, if you're going to choose between this one and this one, choose the one whose mother was in Psycho because it will get some press for you. I'm never going to pretend that I just got that on my own, like I'm just a little girl from nowhere getting it. Clearly, I had a leg up. Now, some argue that there is a downside to being a Nepo baby, most notably Gwyneth Paltrow, who I have so many thoughts on. I really do feel that once your foot is in the door, which you unfairly got in, then you have to work almost twice as hard and be mm -hmm. twice as good yeah. because people are ready to pull you down and say you don't belong there and you're only there because of your dad or your mom or whatever the case may be. For me, as someone who had to work my ass off to get where I am, you know, take the sexist and racist bullshit aside because that is a whole component of itself, but like I've had to make myself and carve a place for myself in this industry a few times over. I mean, we all know what happened to my first channel, but I didn't come from money in the slightest. 
artist or have famous parents or connections. It's all been work, like really f***ing hard work. And y'all being here and, and just us relating and bonding and having community together is, th there's just, there's no replacing that. If you're born with the whole, you know, silver spoon thing, just be honest about that shit. Stop proclaiming to the world that you did this all on your own when you did it with the help of millions of dollars at your disposal from birth. And like, I'm not trying to insult the achievements of, you know, talented Nepo babies. Like they couldn't help who their parents are, but there is a difference between the drive and success of a legitimate self-made person and that of a silver spoon baby. And I think diminishing that difference and actually acting, you know, when you were born into wealth, acting like you faced the same challenges and struggles. Eh, I think that's almost co-opting people who've done it purely on their own. Both entities can be respected, but we don't need to invalidate the other and act like you're the same and you went through all of those same things because it's just impossible. It's not true. Okay, it is time for a kitty palette cleanser. I still don't, they, like the kitties are in a separate location now. I'm gonna figure out one way I'm gonna bring them back to the studio. <laughs> but look, they so cute, they so cute. Be sure to grab your Petty University apparel and the Petty is my love language items and embrace your inner Petty and join the community. All of the items are linked below. Also be sure to follow me on Instagram, okay? I'm coming for Kim Kardashian's Instagram following numbers, okay? <laughs> That's funny, like I'm not even close, but like let's help Swoop get closer, okay? Swoop is Swoop is feeling a little lonely on Instagram these days. <laughs> so you can follow me over there for all of my nonsense and also tag me in your petty outfits. I love seeing all of your outfits and I would love to repost you on my stories. A couple of Twitter shout outs from my last doc where I sufficiently roasted the whole ass ego of some troglodyte men, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Whether women want to accept it or not. Whether women want to accept it or not. <laughs> You're not special, you're like other girls. That's the I'm key. not special. Like so, you're like other women that are So like, what makes you special then? Transforming Sims to Pamps. <laughs> Bros, bra, bro tato chip, okay? The professors are here, to, okay? To give you all your protein shakes of knowledge. <laughs> and they go transform you from a simp to a pimp player. Pimp, pimp, pimp. If you haven't seen that one, it is hilarious. It might be some of my best work, honestly. And it's linked below. Uh, the first shout out goes to Virgo's Thick Groove, who says, drag these hoes, swoop never misses. <laughs> I love it. Short, sweet, straight to the point, And we are, we are on the same page. A second shout out goes to Emmy who says, I think this video is so important because even though it is fun to laugh at Bert and Ernie, <laughs> there is a much bigger problem at the root of what they say. I appreciate Swoop for having a serious conversation about the real danger this way of thinking can pose to our society. If you wanna be my next Twitter shout out, make sure to follow me on Twitter at SpankyV, linked below and retweet this video right here. And again, also hit me up on Instagram, linked in the description. That's where I post most often and respond to a lot of DMs. Be sure to check my link below at Kenzie.com and use code SWOOP1 to get $50 off your Kenzie IPL device and join me on Team Hairless because you deserve it, honey. Listen, I know, I know I might sound like a broken record at this point if I say this, but we don't have to make people like this famous. Like, it's literally up to us, the viewers and fans and customers and you. Like, we all have the power to decide who is an influencer, who is a celebrity, and who is not based on the content that you consume. Now, while there certainly are worse people in the world than Kim Kardashian, I mean, like, you don't have to go far. Just look at her mother, Chris, who we will dig into far more than we did Kim. But while there are certainly more problematic people in influencing the masses in a very overt negative way. I feel like Kim Kardashian is more of a kind of sleeper cell, a little corruption here, a little fraud there, a little manipulation along the way, and never gives any real transparency to her fans, like the people who look up to her as their influencer, and that is what really bothers me. As I mentioned, I'm going to do a much deeper dive into the culture vulture wars that Kim keeps starting and the mass manipulation of 
her audience in ways that I think are far more damaging than, you know, a bad clothing store, or a couple of lawsuits just sprinkled about. But I think the question I will always be left with is, why do so many people care? Like, why do so many people keep up with the Kardashians? Why do hardworking people throw their money at every product that people like Kim shill at them when she's so clearly manipulative of her audience? I mean, she had the SEC come for her, okay? And the SEC don't get out of bed for less than a million dollars, so you know it's bad. In a world where so many creators and influencers are sharing their genuine, real selves for the world to see and just kind of take it or leave it, I hope y'all see me as someone like that. I try to be as open as possible. Sometimes I overshare. Why is it that so much of the public would rather ditch the genuinely open influencers, which there are so many, and cling to those who have no interest in actually being real with their audiences? I think the moment that we all collectively finally realize that we can significantly reduce the amount of influencer abuse of their audiences by simply not engaging with them the same, the more we can trust that who we do stand behind also stands behind us. And you know, when all else fails, stay petty. <laughs> Class dismissed. Swoop!